what's up people and welcome back to the Over and 80 Minutes podcast. This week I've got another cracking guest and it's my first female guest on the podcast. So Hannah, you officially have that title. Let's give you a quick introduction. We've got Watsonian ladies, Jordan Hill Head, a Scotland star, both 7s and 15s. She's a GB Olympic athlete, officially confirmed as of the past seven days. She's also got the most iconic fringe in rugby and before you know it, everybody will have one. Hannah, how are you? How are you getting on? Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. You're the first person to ask us back. Thank you very much. There you go. No, I'm good. I'm good. I've had a good day. It looks like it's about to storm here, so it is so clammy and sweaty in a teenage bedroom, as you can imagine. Yes. You know, and it's like two by two foot, like student hall vibes in here. It's disgusting. Yeah. We move. We thrive. On like your third t-shirt of the day. <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite that bad, but yeah. You you have a nicer house than me. <laughs> Right, Hannah, I'm going to get started. So you're feeling good. You're living the best life. Hannah Smith, you are a GB Olympic athlete representative. How does that sound? And how does it feel when someone says that to you? Yeah, um, it's a bit crazy, actually. Like, I just never, ever thought that this would be where I would be in life. But yeah, it's very, very exciting. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to get there and get going. Um, but yeah, still doesn't feel real when people say that to me. No, not at no, all. Not quite, not quite. <laughs> Did you never have that in the plan when you first picked up the rugby ball? You were like, yep, I can see me, grand stage. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, obviously it hasn't been in for very long, but I think after Rio, I was like, right, I really want to do this. Like, that looks mm -hmm. amazing. Um, so, yeah, sort of worked hard for it for then, from then. <laughs> That's a good, it's a good insight to have, like, a sort of four-year plan. Like, I don't, like, I don't know how people plan for four years. Was there, um... How how did it go? Did somebody say we want not say you specifically, but like was there coaches that were like we want this many Scotland people and we're gonna work and you had to be like I'm gonna make sure that's me or was this just all a personal thing of this is the Hannah Smith attitude I'm gonna go and crush it? Yeah, it was more like a personal personal goal really. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't know, have any idea how many Scots would be involved and you know and Welsh as well. Um, mm -hmm. But it was great that obviously Scott was the head coach that kind of gave us a bit of confidence because we he, obviously he knows us as well um mm. so it was quite good having him involved um and we've we've all got quite good relationships with him so it's great to like have him there um but yeah it was mostly personal like i just wanted to i wanted to do it i just i thought it would be incredible and so far it has been <laughs> good so what does the olympics mean to you as a person not just not just olympic rugby like the olympics like what do you think of when you feel the olympics what emotions come into play yeah, when I think about it, it's, I mean, even when you're, obviously when you're not involved, I think it's just something that everybody watches and everybody gets obsessed with. And it is, it's quite emotional because it's, you know, it's competing as GB seems so special. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm, I, I, every single time it's on, I'm very emotional watching it. So I can't imagine what it's going to be like to be there. <laughs> um, but it's just, it's so important. To, it sort of unifies the the nation, which is really nice. So yeah, it's just an incredible, incredible thing. I know it's the time anybody comes together. As we were saying before we came on air, we having a bit of a mock about English heritage coming up in Scotland. <laughs> but then for that, like four or five weeks, it's GB. It's like, yeah. it's like, it's like Murray at Wimbledon. As soon as he's in Wimbledon, all the English are like, oh, he's British. And yeah. then any any time after he's always a Scottish tennis player. Yeah, when he's doing well. He's yeah. British. Yeah. Exactly. So when you got into the extended squads, oh no, before that I want to talk so now we're talking about the Olympic ceremony. I really want you to be one of the you know how you have you have like the calm and composed, like the walked out and it's like I've done this a million times before. Even though it's like you we can see you're faking it to the back seat, you've never never walked around. Are you gonna be one of those where it's just I'm cool camp personified? Are you gonna be the I've got the GoPro out, I've got the phone out, I'm recording everything, I'm dancing along to the music? Yeah, I mean, I don't think we're gonna get the opportunity to go um to the centre of Venice just with everything that's going on in the world. But um I think if it was me, I'd probably be just crying at the back. <laughs> <laughs> I am just overcome with emotion. Um, yeah, I don't think I'd be able to keep myself cool and collected. No, that's the best way to be. It's like we we want to see people with passion. Like you want to see the group of people taking endless selfies as they do their walk round. Yeah. And you want to be the first, like you know, you know, when you see the athlete and then the camera pans to them, they clock that they're on the camera, and all you just see is like the high mum and the wave. That's what everybody yeah. wants. Yeah, yeah. No, that would that would definitely be me. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd be making the most of it. Like I'd have it as like Instagram display picture. The next twenty posts would all be it. Everything. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. 
right so i can't bring you on in the middle of the olympics because this is probably going to go a bang smack around the time we're playing the sevens i'm going to move things around and get you on how does it feel going being in the extended squad for the like when you're there and you go jesus i've actually got a shot at this like you're because you were in um it was dublin before wasn't it the before we went to la we you went to la i'll just chuck myself on there yeah we went to la <laughs> team manager <laughs> yeah Mascot. Moral support, yeah, moral <laughs> support, just there for moral support. Um, you got into the extended squad. How does it feel when you're in that like 25 to 30 group? Or you're, I don't know how many people got to go in the end, but did you, did you get to the point where you go, geez, I've actually got a real shot of this? Like, like not to not to be rude and swear on it, but did you just think, fuck me, like, I'm, I'm here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was crazy. Like, it was so intimidating going, like, there was like 22 of us initially mm -hmm. and obviously great to have the six Scottish girls involved um, to have a bit of a home from home but um, yeah I mean turning up to Loughborough for the first week I think we were all very very nervous obviously the English girls have been full-time pros you know they've they've been on the series they're very very good sevens players it was very intimidating mm -hmm. um, coming from from Scotland and you know we we're we we're obviously not quite quite up there yet um, so it was very intimidating but it just the the environment was great. The girls were so supportive of each other. We all pushed each other every week to get better, and we've all developed so much over the past few months. So mm -hmm. you know we, that's down to the environment and down to the girls that we were around. So um, yeah, intimidating at first, but we soon settled in and, and made friends, mm -hmm. and it's been great. What's what's squad like? What's squad life like beyond the the bits we got to see on rugby highlights TV and Twitter and Rona Lloyd showing us scoring three tries and this and that and dominating the park yeah it's mostly it's mostly us just playing tuck tuck like board games <laughs> save that see that i actually i have a question asking what it is because i have no idea what it is so we're going to save that so how is it like um when they did they have you like rooming was it like um you're partnered with them or like did, it, so did they do like a good job of splitting up the nations or were they just like well, initially we weren't allowed to be, have roomies with obviously mm -hmm. with all the COVID stuff going on, they were really strict about it. So initially the first several weeks we were roomed alone um, mm -hmm. and spent like had quite a lot of our meals in our rooms as well. So the only real time that we had to socialise was on the pitch, um, which is good because everybody's like excited and happy and having a good yeah. time. So it's actually quite a good time to get to know each other, but also you missed out on the sort of camaraderie behind the scenes as well but mm -hmm. I think saying that you know we did really well to actually bond despite that mm -hmm. like we, we bonded really quickly and we all got on really well um, and it's a really good vibe in the camp so even though we were rooming alone we still managed to to sort of make friends and, and enjoy it and make the most of it so yeah mm -hmm. amazing right last bit about uh, the sevens I want to talk about LA so you're now in the squad you've been announced everybody's seen it all over twitter you've got people like me message on instagram <laughs> saying i'm so proud i knew you'd do it never in doubt <laughs> and then so what's it like when they go you're in the middle of isolation you've been stuck in scotland for a year and a half and somebody was taking you to california you're going to la obviously you couldn't go out and explore everything but what's it like as the squad going i'm going as a gv squad to play in a sevens tournament warming up for the olympics how's that yeah i mean we obviously had the Dublin tournament the week before and, you know, tensions were running a bit high that weekend, I think, because it was the final weekend for people to sort of show what they could do before selection came out. So when selection came out, I think just because the build up had been a bit stressful, I didn't realise how much it had been weighing on my mind. And then when we found out, obviously, that we were selected and we were going to LA, that was just incredible. Like it was just such a relief. Um, and then I think it sort of kicked in the following week when we went to training and then we had the kit out. So we had the kit out the day before we went to LA and that was unbelievable. Like just ridiculous amounts of kit everywhere. Um, just Free, free like, stash is always a winner for any player. Is, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, just treated like Queens walked in, just given all this stuff. It was insane. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, we obviously had the excitement of LA as well. Um, very very hot very sweaty but very fun nonetheless <laughs> <laughs> oh ellie i got so jealous looking at your instagram ellie like you, i remember we discussed it before we came on air is that photo of you all in your in your it was gifted swimsuits wasn't it was it yeah was it all, all balls that sent it through 
No, budgie, budgie smugglers, yeah. Oh, shout out budgies. <laughs> <laughs> wish I could rock a pair. <laughs> yeah, wish I could rock a pair. Send me a Tokyo pair. <laughs> but no, it's, if you ever want motivation, this is to the listeners. If you ever want motivation, find this photo that Hannah was either tagged in. Yeah, that Hannah was tagged in. And you'll see nothing but six packs. You'll immediately go to your biscuit cupboard and throw the whole thing out. Yeah, Not a chance. Insane. Insane. <laughs> all you need is an LA. All you need is an LA temperature, a uh, rugby sevens diet and nutrition, and you'll be fine. Ideal. <laughs> there you go. Just Sorry. like that. <laughs> Good. Right. Last thing I'm going to talk about: Are mum and dad getting fake fringe merchandise made up yet? Because <laughs> it is the most iconic fringe, and it's going to be everybody that they talk about at the Olympics. Yeah, I mean, my mum also has a little fringe as well, so she rocks that too. Um, but you, yeah, you've copied think, your mum, you've stole your mum's look. <laughs> well, basically, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think we should get on that. I think that's a good money maker. I do. Exactly. Yeah, just get it. Fringes for everyone. <laughs> I can't wait to see Scott's the next time. It's just going to be a little like selection of people all just with little blonde I'd fringes. I'd love it. That'd be so good. <laughs> Uh, I think I, the Japanese I, would enjoy that as well. It seems it does seem like a Japanese kind of thing, doesn't it? It's yeah. like they get they go mental for paraphernalia. Yeah, they love it. So I think that yeah. would be quite a good a good thing to have. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's how you take all seriousness out of being a GB representative <laughs> with Sam Matthews. Isn't it? Good. Now I was going to do the quick fire questions first, but I really wanted to get into that, so we've got that done. So now I'm going to make you do the quick fire questions. Okay. So now you don't have time to think about the answer and get back. Yeah. Good. Right, so they're really straightforward. Answer whichever one comes into your head. If you give something funny or you answer it a bit questionably, I will call you out on it. <laughs> so will your DMs after it, all the Instagram listeners, all six of them will be like, <laughs> they'll be like, that Hannah Smith, weird one. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get started. This is quick fire questions with Hannah Smith. See, I'm getting better now. I can break them up for the YouTube clips. <laughs> right, Hannah, tea or coffee? Coffee. Strong. Night out or a night in? Um, night out. <laughs> right. Do you either score a try or make a try saving tackle? I think the tackle. I think that gets everybody like really pumped. I mean, obviously, a try does as well, but I think more so. Like, you feel like an absolute hero if you make that tackle. Is that 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 bundle into touch on yeah. against the right in the line, and then plus on a highlight reel, if you have like a big smash compilation, yeah. you're you're settled for life. Very satisfying. Exactly. Right. Sweets or chocolate is a go-to movie snack? Chocolate. Strong. What type of chocolate? Um, I really like Kinder chocolate. I know that's so childish. Do you like the, the wee bars? Yeah. So um, good. They are, I swear they have the same properties as crack cocaine. I cannot get enough oh, of them. Oh, they're, they're so <laughs> addictive. Yeah. It's I, like, I you know, like the little like, 20 packet bundles of them. Yeah. I literally will just sit and go through one of them like it's a pack of sweets. Yeah, it's, it's so it's dangerous. Terrifying. It's That's terrifying. That's the ones that only like two in it. But yeah. I, I only, I only eat them around other people because then I know at least somebody else is going to have some of them. Yeah, true. That's a good. <laughs> that's a good tactic, actually. <laughs> there we go. Right, rugby or dogs? You have to get rid of one of them. Which one are you getting rid of? Yeah, I would get rid of rugby. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't get rid of my dogs. <laughs> no. Yeah, if you want to see a good set of dogs, just go to that. Sounds really bad. If you want to see. <laughs> Oh, Sam Matthews is cancelled on his first few games. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you want to see some cute little dogs, go to Hannah's Instagram. It's all just puppies. Puppies and rugby is what it is. Yeah, it's pretty much Right, a movies or a TV series? Probably a series. What's your favourite series of the past five years? Um, if you had to recommend a series. Very hooked on Breaking Bad. See, never seen it. Never oh, seen Breaking Bad. It. Yeah, no. so good. I like him. It's a bit of a wild one. I don't know how you feel. It's a, it's called Ragnarok. It's on Netflix. It's actually Norwegian. Oh, I think I have seen that. Yeah. It's it's surprisingly for somebody who doesn't speak Norwegian, it's very good. Oh, <laughs> you I just have some. Back. You just have to do a bit of reading, but it's very very good. Yeah. Uh, sevens or fifteens? Sevens. Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Brian is just tearing up team shoes right now. <laughs> Never play again. <laughs> Helen Nelson is now 12. <laughs> yeah, that would be that. <laughs> there you go. Uh, bath or a shower, if you had to go. Shower. See, I'm a I'm a bath guy. Like, if you had to, like, want to relax in, bath. Not a... Yeah, like, I, I would have a bath every so often just to, like, chill. But, yeah, always mm -hmm. a shower normally. Bath, bath bomb and a good candle, that's you. 
That's that's the media. That's the that, media. That <laughs> what do you mean Saturday? I don't limit days ending in Y. That's me. <laughs> there you go. Right. How to how would you like your steak cooked? Medium rare. Amazing. Correct answer. Only except yeah. once. The only when answer, you, really. When yeah, when you've done nothing but work in restaurants, you learn fast that medium rare is the acceptable answer. Yeah. Would you rather go out for a night out in a club or a night out in a pub? A pub. Live music? Live music. Yeah, would you like live music in your pub or um if it's good, yeah. But if it's so often it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have next time you're in a pub with live music and the guy recognizes you, he's gonna be like, I really hope I'm good. <laughs> I really hope that I get a gold star. Yeah. <laughs> If he sees you walk out halfway through, he'll be like, oh my god, I must have been off. Yeah, he'll know. Exactly. <laughs> just look at him in the way, just don't break eye contact in the way. Just, yeah, you're exactly. the reason I'm going. <laughs> right, arms day or leg day? Yeah, leg day. I don't like arms day. I don't like it. Legs day is optional. <laughs> no, we did it to, We did it arms day today and we were nearly crying. It was not fun. <laughs> just nothing but biceps biceps and more biceps. That, <laughs> that's the problem with the arms day is there. there's, there's not many things to train yeah <laughs> right back by popular demand because i mentioned it in the trailer and then didn't mention it in any of the subsequent episodes would you like a bourbon or custard cream uh custard cream no yeah <laughs> podcast ends <laughs> <laughs> all right see you later <laughs> <laughs> right sweet or salted popcorn um probably sweet correct I, I can hear the dog i know they're they're fighting in the background they're fighting. <laughs> if, if, the, if the podcast goes to pot we'll just angle the camera down and that can be <laughs> <laughs> there you go right would you rather be a ninja or a pirate ninja and yeah. last one slocks uh, slocks socks and sliders yes or no yes definitely amazing right why would you rather be a ninja than a pirate yeah, because ninjas are cool. But have you never seen Captain Jack Sparrow or any of the first yeah, characters? Can he do things that a ninja can do? No. It's I mean, useless. I've seen him run on a wheel. <laughs> I mean, no, that was all right. <laughs> Just going to defend the, the pirate race. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That is quick fire questions with Hannah Smith. Absolutely. You didn't answer anything questionably there. I wondered how the rugby or dogs was going to go, but we're fine. Bourbons you are custard cream. impressed about custard creams. Yeah, that's that's got you off the Christmas card list. But other than that, we're yeah. we're grand. I'll, I'll still send you a congratulations for your gold medal. But I'll send you a pack of bourbons. <laughs> oh dear! I or if, 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 them. Oh, oh well, the effort was still there. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what counts. Right, Hannah, we're going to move on to the stuff that doesn't involve rugby. We're going to have a nice little chat. So, for people that don't know, Hannah, when she has all this abundance of free time of representing Scotland as a 15 star, as a 7 star, going on Tokyo to the Olympics, she's also a fully qualified vet. How did you become a fully qualified vet? I mean, obviously, uni and that, but how, talk us through the journey. Um, so, I think I decided pretty early that I wanted to be a vet. I was probably, like, 11 at the time. Um, my dad was a surgeon, so it was kind of either medicine or veterinary and I think just because I loved animals so much I just sort of decided on the veterinary side of things Um, did a lot of work on farms and with horses and stuff uh, before I went to uni and then yeah obviously had to do uni for five years which was savage but um, <laughs> we got through it Um, yeah it was it was quite an easy decision really I don't think I had anything else that I was particularly keen on I think that was the main the main driver for me um, mm -hmm. career-wise so yeah I didn't I didn't really struggle to come to the decision or anything no so how does uh being it's not it's not rugby related but how does being a vet manage to fit into the lifestyle of being a, a rugby international rugby superstar <laughs> um so yeah I I had to have quite a lot of conversations with my work and with the SRU about sort of additional support because my holiday allowance wouldn't allow for me to play both and mm -hmm. um, I was obviously really keen to play both you wouldn't want to miss either really so um, the SRU were really good about paying for me to have extra holidays from work and to be fair my work were very understanding and like very happy for me to be off because um, they knew that it, like it was such a big passion of mine so my work were really understanding about it um, I was doing a four day week as well, which was helpful. Um, you're, mm -hmm. you're doing long days, but at least that I had a Wednesday off. So at least that was like an extra recovery day or I could fit in another session if I needed to fit in another session. 
Um, and then I wasn't doing any out of hours either, which again would have mm -hmm. limited my availability for for rugby. So it was quite cushy, to be fair, for a veterinary job. Uh, <laughs> I love that you found the word cushy, and that I think there's such like people don't use slang, and I think it needs to be used more. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted you there. I just well, yeah, it's, it's, it's the perfect word to describe my setup. Um, before I obviously went on sabbatical, so yeah. Mm -hmm. I know it's 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 nice that you decided that you're going to be a junior school. I'll take sabbatical now. Like I think I've earned it now. <laughs> yeah. No, it just got to a point yeah. where I just couldn't. Like lockdown last year, we were very busy, um, mm -hmm. and then it, like as rugby was starting up again in August September time, I just I couldn't deal with it, and I knew that it was going to be a big year with with GB stuff and the mm -hmm. Scotland stuff because of potential World Cup qualifiers and all that that going on as well. So. Um, yeah, I just had to make a decision, and it's it's the best decision I've made, really. Like it, in my my body and my performance has been a lot better purely because I'm not as stressed and I'm not as I'm not run off my feet all the time. So, yeah, definitely not in the office for eight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Running about all over the place. It's a good. I think that speaks volumes as well to a lot of people in life. Like the like if you talk to people and say. I have I have got a lot of stuff and people will be like okay well you can take a back seat from this for a while yeah yeah so no, well shout out to your work and the SRU for being very understanding there yeah I mean Gemma Faye was great I think I phoned her um had a very emotional phone call with her in September <laughs> August September last year but I was like I just can't <laughs> I just can't do it anymore and she was like that's fine she was really understanding she was really good so yeah she um she did her job really well there <laughs> good let's see everybody's people that's what it is people might seem scary but everybody's people yeah no, exactly right so in your abundance of free time that you have day in day out if you had to be on one game show what game show would it be on a game show yeah like you're who wants to be a millionaire you want to be on the chase ninja warrior if you're feeling it uh, is that the one where they have to like run along big red balls and fall in the water and stuff that's total wipeout i'd do i'd go on that that'd be fun <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> don't, don't want to win money or anything. I'm just going to be here. I'm just any excuse to just dive head first into the water. No, so it looks so much fun. I think, um, like, you see, if you manage to get that for like a team bonding day out, that would be like, so good. Yeah, or like a like a friends reunion. Like, imagine you got like your twenty pals from home that you're still in close contact with. Like, yeah. What we're doing for a day out? Total wipeout. <laughs> or just like a Hindu or something. <laughs> <laughs> be hilarious. It'd be even better if you weren't the the hen, and yeah, you were oh, just one of, you were the one that organised it. Yeah. And this this woman thinks she's got like a nice relaxing spa weekend. Yeah. Because you could lie to her, you go like, oh, there's going to be a pool, there's inflatables, it's this. And that. Yeah. You just do have to wear a life jacket and a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I didn't think you'd pick that. That's incredible. <laughs> oh, I just I, every time I see it, I'm like, I'd, I'd love to do that. It looks so fun. There you go. So, yeah, there you go. Pastime, so if you're not on a game show, what pastime would Hannah Smith have? What are Hannah Smith's pastimes? Obviously, um, you've got running around your feet. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like obviously, with your when you're away with rugby all the time, it's actually quite hard work. Like <laughs> you're um you're all like going all the time. Like you've got your early starts. You're you're training quite a lot. You're around people all the time. You're going out and about you're doing your thing so when you get home it's actually really nice to just relax um so yeah like long walks with the dogs are really nice and mm -hmm. obviously chilling with a series or like meeting friends for for coffee or lunch or whatever um yeah it's very very relaxed when i'm home which is nice <laughs> so if you had to go and you had to pick something that you could do like are you a book reader are you a TV, are you? Uh, my body's aching. I'm gonna sit with the the massage gun. Nobody talked to me for five days. Or are you? Are you a catch up with friends kind of pastime person? I'm kind of all of the above. Like I will, mm -hmm. I do like. I'm a bit of a bookworm, so I do like time with a book. Um, mm -hmm. but that's usually like night time. Um, and then yes, I do need a massage gun because <laughs> <laughs> I am getting older and my body is struggling. But um, yeah, I think a bit of everything really like I'm, yeah. I'm quite easy that way what's your what's your go-to type if you could tell anybody to go read one book what would your go-to be oh if, if, you've, if you've got a few you can say a few i'm not gonna ask you to put your favorite book of all time um i quite like classic books 
Like I like um... <laughs> like the Bible or <laughs> <laughs> no, not the Bible. Um, like Jane Austen and stuff like that. Like um, the Russian writers, Dostoevsky, people like that. Um, oh, I get, I get what you mean. And then like the usual Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, stuff like that. Amazing. I'm halfway through one of Tolkien's books just now. It's the Fall of Gondolin. I'm trying to get through just now. Sometimes it's a bit hard, isn't it, Tolkien? It is. It is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those dry, ones. You, yeah, you read. You read the page, and you just go. I've absorbed absolutely none of that, and go back yeah, to the start of the page. Yeah, I've got no idea what he just said. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's great like for it, putting. Yeah. You, it's great for putting you to sleep, though, not because the book's bad, but the, the mental concentration it requires. And you're like, yeah, oh. it exhausts you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been yeah. mentally defeated by one page of a 500 page book. <laughs> so you're technically entitled to 500 nights of good sleep. Yes. <laughs> right. yeah. We're going back to it because you discussed it and I really wanted to know what it is. What is Tuck Tuck and why is it the main form of pastime in every seven steam I see just now? <laughs> so I think it's come, like, it's come from France, so it's a French game, but um, Rona will basically say to me, it's like Ludo or frustration but i've never played either of those things or sorry i think not played that either so i don't actually know but basically you've just got little men you've got four little men and you use a pack of cards and each card does something different but you've mm -hmm. basically just got to get your men around the board and then back into their home and the first person to do that wins but you, al you also work in a pair so you've got the person opposite you is in your team as well so once you've completed it and you've got your men home you can then use your cards to help get their men home all right so it's quite it's really good actually we'll spend, we'll spend hours playing it like it's, it sounds like a game that never gets old especially with like a, a vast group of people yeah especially when you've got people that are like they'll come into the game and they'll be quite sneaky and they'll kill people because you can kill people with the cards <laughs> so then you've got people doing that and then you've got <laughs> you've just got the people who just get around really quietly and get back in home and then you don't realize that they've managed that because everyone else is too busy killing each other so yeah it is really fun this sounds more tactical than a game of rugby. It's very tactical. It is so, very tactical. So who would you say is the best tuck tuck player you've ever experienced? Or are you confident you could wipe the floor with everyone? Oh no, I'm not I'm not one of the best. Um no. Helena Rowland's quite good. Really? Rona's good, obviously, because she's mm -hmm. probably played it about a million <laughs> times. Um and then Nelly's good because she's played it a lot as well, and Tomo as well. They are all quite good at it. Tom, what a legend. <laughs> I love, I love Tom. Legend. I've got so much time for Tom. Rona just seems like she's good at everything, though. I don't think Rona, like, yeah. I've never seen Rona, like, I remember watching her during lockdown. She's like, I've just picked up bagpipes and I'm good at Honestly, it. Honestly, <laughs> like, she's just really good at obscure, weird things like Rubik's Cubing, and yeah, she's good at Tuck Tuck. And yeah, she was doing like online bagpipe lessons with all these men and i was like it was just the most <laughs> random thing but she just picks things up so quickly um, i bet she's quite yeah. good like, i bet she's one of those people like if you're her flatmate you dread every time she gets like an amazon parcel you're like oh no <laughs> yeah what is coming next that is definitely what she's like well rhoda when you eventually come on you can defend yourself as being just <laughs> wildly exciting like she'll very... defend herself she'll accept that that is absolutely true <laughs> There's, there's nothing wrong with being eccentric. Like, <laughs> nor is very boring. Yeah. <laughs> is what I've learned. <laughs> right. So we're both, we're both converts to Edinburgh. We're not both originally from Edinburgh. So I'm basically just going to do a wee little bit of an advert for Edinburgh. What's your three go-to activities or places in Edinburgh? So we spend a lot of time at Camo Estate. Um, <laughs> absolutely love it there. Um, it's a great place for the dogs and it's so it's so pretty um so yeah we spend a lot of time there and then i've never can... been to camel been you should camel. go it's so nice it is really really nice i'm a beach um, guy i'm cramming every day yeah i do like cramming as well but the last time i went there <laughs> one of the dogs kept finding dead birds and he kept <laughs> eating, eating them so i was spent 30 minutes at the beach stressed out my box because i could see him like swallowing the wings so the wings are like this and he's swallowing them and like chewing them and then he spewed up so much bird that night that i was like i'm never going back to cabin with the dogs ever again so, go to go to gullen instead it's technically not edinburgh but gullen's nice a lot less dead birds somewhere else 
<laughs> we go to um, North Berwick quite a lot, like Seacliff and um, like North Berwick Beach yeah. um, with the dogs as well, which is nice. But yeah, I don't think I'll ever go back to Cramond with the dogs. <laughs> where, you, where you need to go if you get a chance, it's a bit further away, go to Yellow Craigs. Yellow Craigs is really, really good. Yeah, we've been, I've been there as well. It's nice. Oh, good. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think right, so Cam a lot of at Camel, yeah. And then probably Stockbridge, we spend a lot of time there as well, like Inverley Park, Stockbridge area, mm -hmm. just because we're not that far from there. So we spend a lot of time there as well, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Like lots of good cafes and places for coffee and stuff. And then, yeah, Inverley Park, we I've not played touch for ages now, but when we're in touch season, we spend a lot of time at Inverley playing there. So yeah, it's, it's a really nice area. Mm -hmm. I would definitely recommend people go there they come to edinburgh <laughs> join in for a game of touch with the scotland the scotland 15. <laughs> yeah how's, how's training going well we were on Inverleaf park today and uh, <laughs> that, yeah that, it's that, not, to me i'd be unlucky like yeah. you'd be that unlucky i'd, I'd go messing about with my mates <laughs> yeah be like, oh because i'll be all right i'm the best and then like you guys will start training i'll be like okay well we can go home now <laughs> So it's not um it's not with the Scotland lot, like they mm -hmm. all rinse me for playing touch. Um so it's touch not with, clap. It's walk not in, with walk in touch is the best game. <laughs> Se second only to rugby golf. Walk in touch are the two best games. Rugby you... tennis is fun too, to be fair. No, I've I've got an awful left peg, so if I aim to go that way. <laughs> yeah, it's straight off my toe. Like I can't I yeah. can't do it, but it's it's fun. No no accuracy, just all distance. No. <laughs> just all power. <laughs> Oh, class. Um, I know somebody's going to ask you on this. I heard a, I heard it on one of the representatives. You've never had a Ting Tai caravan. This is no, this I is purely not. this is purely for listeners. This is purely for an Edinburgh in the know. But <laughs> you've got to get a Ting Tai in you. Yeah, I know. I really do. Everyone talks about it all the time. Um, mm -hmm. Waz, when she was down for Six Nations, because she moved to Edinburgh for a bit, she was staying in an Airbnb, and she mm -hmm. was getting a Ting Tai like every other day. So, yeah, I really, really need to actually sort myself out and just get one. Yeah. Um, it does sound like my cup of tea. Instead, instead of bourbons, I'll send you a ting tai if you get a gold medal. Yeah, that will be, be as <laughs> as payment for coming on the podcast and getting a gold medal. I'll send you it. I'll send you the money for a ting tai. Yeah, I'd appreciate that more than the bourbons. In, in, yeah, invoice <laughs> over an eight. <laughs> one ting tai order. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when I'll get one back. It'll be like ten. I'll be like, you want me to get one for the whole team? But I suppose I should. <laughs> there we go. So that's us, right? We've done the bit. This is the part that all your fans are going to come in for now. We're going to talk about rugby. We're going to talk about your journey in rugby. So you were aged, it was 17 you started playing rugby? Yeah. So how did that come about? Was there any sports that led you to play rugby or was it just a case of, um, I know a lot of people join teams for CVs and UCAS and stuff like that. Were you like, I'll just give it a shot and fell in love? Or um, I'm, I'm all, I've always been quite sporty. Like I've always done quite a lot of different sports. Um, mm -hmm. I was really into athletics like sprinting and throwing and then um so like that it got me fit so like that was a really good thing going into rugby now I look back like I had good strength and good power from that anyway um and then yeah I was also a very keen curler which I also get rinsed for <laughs> I didn't, so... didn't expect you to say that why did you get rinsed for curling that's a that's a, that's a Scottish sport that's a patriot sport I know. And we're very like Scot the Scots are very good at it, so yeah, mm. it's very fun. But yeah, the girls think it's a bit dreamy, so I get rinsed for that too. Um, but yeah, I was really keen on that. I started that when I was seven, so I was doing that quite a lot, quite often, um, every week. So yeah, really, really keen on that. But then yeah, my brother, very keen rugby player, he did loads of age grade stuff at Stirling County, and then there was just a day where my mum rocked up to pick him up, and there was a poster that said they were starting their own women's side. And she just was like, you could give it a go, see if you like it. And then, yeah, no, like, didn't look back. Loved it from day one. Absolutely loved it. So, yeah. How, how did you How did you rock up for day one? Was it a pair of uh, your brother's old boots that were a bit worn out? Or was it a uh, mum was like, we'll get you the gear? No, we literally, we went, in, there was there used to be this rugby shop in Stirling. And um, we went to, we went to this rugby shop and there was a bargain bin with like these ASICs like black asics <laughs> eight studders like, oh, like the, the, most, the, the front row shoe <laughs> the ugliest boots <laughs> you've ever seen and yeah just got them because they were cheap and then yeah wore them to death and yeah <laughs> looking back i can't actually believe that i was turning up in them but uh, um yeah no, i did ask for giving you free stash <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> 
What time have you learned? Thank you should, God. What, what you, should, like, you should have kept it. Like, we humble, like, are we, this is the boot I'm going back to. That's true. It's, I should have kept them. It's amazing. Like, the things you think of, it's like, if I still had that, I'd keep it with such pride yeah. that you get rid of. It's just, it's hilarious to think that I was wearing them. Like, now I can't bear mm-hmm. to wear anything that's heavier than, like, the wee Nike moldies. And I had those <laughs> bloody A6 things, honestly. Yeah. So funny. They're all, they're all good until you'll have your next like Scotland fixture that's not on Scotston and it'll be like torrential mud. Yeah. And you'll be like, I've got moldies that are so thin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they have a- Asics. I was going to say, you'll have Asics knocking at the door going, do you miss us yet? <laughs> I know, exactly. Oh, yeah. So your journey as a player, you said you went to County. So you started at County. You're one of the first team. That's that's really good for County then go. One of the first players we ever had is now a GB representative. Yeah, it's quite cool. Uh, if anybody from County's listening, I'd be firing that straight on like the about page. <laughs> like famous players to play for us. So your journey there, so you're obviously you're now a, you're registered as a Watsonian ladies player. I know as you were saying earlier, you've been pretty busy, so you've not had time to get there because you're representing the country. <laughs> which is a fair enough reason as far as I'm concerned. So you're at County, did you go straight to the late Watsonian ladies or was there a few steps in between obviously with uni? Or? Yeah, so I applied to go to uni in Edinburgh and Glasgow and I'd always thought that I would go to Edinburgh um, mm-hmm. and my dad's from here and like we'd always spent a lot of time in Edinburgh when we were younger like we'd always come through to Edinburgh for the day that was just where we like chose mm-hmm. to come so yeah I got into both and decided last minute that I was actually more keen on Glasgow just because it was a completely new place I didn't know it very well and yeah went there and absolutely loved it and played for Hills the whole time I was there. Um, I played for County for a season or two at the start and then, um, yeah, moved to Hills and th- absolutely loved it. Great bunch of girls, really fun environment and obviously quite, we were quite good at the time as well, so quite a dominant team. Um, which was was say, you, really you, won the final, you won the final with Hills, did you not? Yeah, yeah, that was a great day. That was a really good day. That was how, how loose was the baby bus at the end of that? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that's all I'm gonna say because I will cost somebody yeah. their job. <laughs> that was a that was a big big day and a big night. It was so good. Quite right. I'd still be out now if I want to fight. Yeah. <laughs> I got three finals and lost them all. So <laughs> <laughs> I am like serial like second place. <laughs> oh, that's a nightmare. <laughs> Heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah. Weird. It's quite good though. Like we've obviously played at Murrayfield, so that was quite a cool. Mm-hmm opportunity for everybody because I think quite a lot of the girls weren't in, like weren't involved in the Scotland stuff so it was actually quite fun for them to go to Murrayfield as well um, yeah. and it was just like a good a good atmosphere because you had most like quite a lot of the boys teams who'd played earlier in the day were just in the stands like drinking and having a great time so yeah it was actually <laughs> like a really fun day out. It is, oh fin- finals day at Murrayfield is the best we went as um the uni rugby team so we weren't in any of it but you know how it's like it's it's always a weird night. It's always like a Thursday or a Friday for some reason. It's never a weekend. So like the best, like anybody, like any team that's in Edinburgh, like what's the means, ladies? Next time you're back, get them to just go to finals day for a day. Yeah. You have, to get re- you have to get really good at putting bottles of rosé in the inside of your jacket. But other than that, it's great. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll bear that in mind. But yeah, like it, it is a fun day and it would, yeah, that would actually be quite a good social. Yeah, fin- finals day, you have to, you, you put two names in a hat for each team that's about to play and each player picks out one of them and then you have to support that team. That'd be a good social. Oh, yeah, that would be good. Let's do that. Why not? <laughs> Organise that social. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. The over 80 minutes when I get all the guests, every guest, I'll get them all to come for a finals day. <laughs> to watch some fast. Yeah, bootleg <laughs> amateur rugby. Just the <laughs> oh, there you good. go. There you go. Right, so I'm going to talk about your Scotland debut now. So your 15s debut came first. And you got thrown in right at the deep end against France in 2013. Yeah. So, so what's was it a... like in fresh faced at France in 2013? Yeah, so that was a very last minute thing. Um, mm-hmm. I wasn't actually in the setup at that point because I was in the middle of all my uni stuff and I was kind of playing rugby for Hills mm-hmm. and really enjoying that, but not, I just mm-hmm. felt like I didn't have time to commit to the Scotland team. But the coach at the time contacted me and said it was like three days before they left for France they were like we don't have any cover and um, we really need you to come to France because we've got no players um for the back row because at the time I was playing back row um so <laughs> what position were we six seven or eight 
so I was I played eight for county and then I went to <laughs> Hills and um Gemma for Scythe, who is now my best mate, but she <laughs> was eight at Hills. My first session at Hills, um somebody asked me what position I played and I said, Oh, I play number eight and Gemma was like, Well you won't be playing that here because I'm number eight. <laughs> and I was like terrified because I was so young and I was like okay um, but then they put me at seven and I absolutely loved it and it was such a good back row with the two of us in it um, but yeah I was playing seven regularly and then they just took me they were like you'll probably get 10 minutes off the bench like don't stress it's going to be fine and then I got there and Susie Brown went down at half time so I was thrown on at half time at seven and I actually was so traumatized by that whole game like they just had massive girls running at me that I was not prepared for um so yeah that was quite a traumatic experience <laughs> I, feel, I feel I feel bad for you having to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can imagine nothing worse <laughs> that'd not, be like my... not fun <laughs> <laughs> like, um, that'd be like that'd be like in the men's perspective that'd be like your first adult game going from under 18s to go yeah yeah so so we've we've drawn one of the super six teams in the first round in your play <laughs> yeah that honestly it was it was savage um but we had a good night out afterwards so well, that's yeah. all that counts pros and cons exactly. <laughs> pros and cons didn't have to revise <laughs> got a good night out got yeah. battered <laughs> absolutely battered honestly that's exactly what we want. So then you've now been in the Scotland setup. You're 20, 2013, and then 2017, you made your sevens debut, was it not? 2017. So four years in the Scotland setup. What's it like being in the Scotland setup for four years? Like, do you feel like, do you get a confidence when you go to camp after the fourth year? Are you like, this is, like, you know, like, old reliable. I know what I'm doing here. Um. Yeah, I still. I don't know, I still get a bit nervous going back in, um, especially if I think I struggle when I go from sevens back to fifteens, I get a bit like jittery when I go back, um, just in between the two, because I think you get so used to the vibe at sevens, it's a smaller group, um, smaller management setup, and then you go back to fifteens and there's about 100 people there, um, <laughs> and sometimes you don't know certain people, so it's all it's a bit overwhelming, but yeah, I think you do get used to the way of things and the routine and stuff, but I think you're always a bit tentative going in. So what's the, what was the first seven situation like? You touched on it there, how different it is. What's it like going into the seven situation first time? And there's like a handful of the amount of people you're expecting to see. Yeah, so I, 2015, I got a phone call from Scott Forrest and he was asking if I was available to play sevens that summer. But I, um, I was in the middle of my exams and very, very, very stressed and like they were my final exams so I just had to get through them and I couldn't make I think a couple of the weekend camps and because I had revision and I was up to my eyeballs in it um, and he basically was like if you can't make these weekends then I can't select you for the, the summer so that was like and I didn't really know much about sevens at the time so I wasn't that bothered and then mm -hmm. 2017 when I actually gave it a go I was like I cannot believe I've not been playing this the whole time like this is the best yeah. thing ever um like we just had such a fun year we were in the trophy so we we're in the league below the GPS that we're in at the moment mm -hmm. and we just had such a good time like sunny sunny sevens we did really well we were really dominant um, we got promoted like it was such a good summer um, but I just I was kicking myself for not starting it earlier because it was just I loved it from day one I loved it I'm jealous I know it's like five years ago and I'm still jealous now you're just like sunny sevens all your mates are hanging out you're yeah. winning weekend after weekend so good what's it, what's it like traveling the world with like 10 of your best pals and you're yeah, just like oh it's so great and like I don't you, you forget like we're so so lucky to be in that situation like mm -hmm. You know, going to Hong Kong, Biarritz, South Africa, you're going all over the place for free. Like you're you're just it's insane. Like how many people can say that they've done that? Um and then just especially with Sevens when you've got that tight knit group, it's just great fun. You mm -hmm. know, but we had we had a tour to South Africa with fifteens and that was just as good, like just as fun. Um I just, just a total laugh and we but we did really well out there as well. I think it makes a difference obviously when you do well um because everyone's just absolutely <laughs> buzzing but yeah it was it's just we're so lucky to be in the situation that we're in mm -hmm. no absolutely so what was it like um actually i'm not gonna ask that we'll, we'll scrap that you've, you've covered it a bit more <laughs> what's the 
you touched on it really briefly, the difference between the... How would you describe the difference between sevens and fifteens, like as a camp? Not as not as sports, like as a camp. Yeah, I think sevens is usually a bit more laid back. Mm-hmm. Like, I think fifteens, there's quite a lot of tension. There's quite a lot of hype because, obviously, the the Six Nations is streamed and lots of people are talking about it. You've got loads of hype leading up to the game, so like the this, the camps can usually be quite like all go like quite intense, quite stressful. Um, so no rugby tennis, no rugby tennis. <laughs> no, no rugby tennis. <laughs> Whereas you go to sevens camps and you're like warming up with spike ball, you're messing about playing what football. A, what a game, we're talking about spike ball later. Oh, so so good. Game. But like, but it's, it's a lot more chilled. And I think mm-hmm. obviously the games, the, the 15s games, it's just one game and it's like so much rests on that one game. Whereas sevens, it's like, like three or four games a day. Um, so you've just got to move on. Like you've got to wipe the slate clean and move on. So it's, it, you know, it is it is intense in a different way. But 15s, I think there's just more pressure and there's more, I think, media awareness as well. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I always find 15s camps a bit more stressful and a bit more full on than, than 7s ones. Yeah, oh, I give, I say it every time, like the thought of 7s terrifies me. But like you say, like, you know, when you're doing like a, like probably when you're back playing for like ladies or you're playing for hills, you know, when you go down to like an amateur league sevens tournament, there's no better day out. Oh, so much fun! Like, like did you ever come? Like, you you're obviously you're aware of like King of the Sevens, the Border Series. Yeah. Did you ever get a chance to like come down to Melrose Lady Sevens Day or something like that? Yeah, I've been to the Melrose Sevens before. Um, I wasn't playing or anything, but I, I've been. Yeah. I've been. Yeah, it's a good yeah, day. Did, did, yeah, did you go to like? Did Melrose back when they had a women's team? Did they ever host like a sevens tournament or that? Um. I don't know actually. I didn't play in one, but they might have done. I can't remember. I'll have to have a word because there's no better day out than a border sevens tournament. Yeah, so good. We went to when I was with County and at Hills mm. actually. We went to Isla, and that was oh, just such a good weekend. Like so, <laughs> so much fun. What the one I always hear about is Orkney. Everybody like the people's lads love an Ork trip to Orkney sevens. Yeah, that's that's the one I want to experience. Not playing because I'm butchered, like, but. Yeah, <laughs> just mentally, yeah. physically butchered. But I'll, I'll go to what? <laughs> <laughs> Orkney is actually really cool because um, I was doing work experience in Orkney at the Vets, and mm-hmm. Dunfermline Rugby came up to play Orkney. Yeah. So there was just like this huge buzz around the town because they're all like so excited about the fact that there, there was a rugby game going on. So visitors, everyone, we have yeah, visitors. They were like, oh my goodness, people are coming across from the mainland. <laughs> this, is, this is amazing. So yeah, we um we ended up going like I was with my friends and we were staying in this little hostel and we ended up going out and it was such a good night out like so much like rugby boys everywhere just having the time of their lives it was such, so, it much, was so much so much chinos yeah <laughs> so many chinos and brown shoes yeah it was great it was and the the town just literally came alive it was so funny <laughs> oh I love it yeah I I'll be honest I prefer amateur rugby to professional rugby I like international <laughs> but I prefer amateur rugby. <laughs> Yeah, right quick quick bit of advice obviously now you're the gb representative you're the stalwart of scotland well, you're the iconic fringe what would your <laughs> advice be what would your advice be for young players or like people trying to get into the game debating getting into the game yeah so i think obviously there's been a lot of um backlash in the media about like women's rugby i mean you see comments on when like teams are there games are announced and scores are announced you Mm -hmm. see comments all over scottish rugby on facebook and twitter and stuff like people just slating the game um weird weird way that people used to announce that they're virgins on twitter um, (laughs) just like keyboard warriors so Mm -hmm. um i think for me it's just it's so important to just ignore it all like you're doing something that you absolutely love and you're doing it with your best mates like there's no better feeling there's no better place to be so just ignore all the hate because mm-hmm. who really cares what they think anyway it's not worth it um and if you're enjoying it and you're having fun then that's the only thing that matters so exactly yeah. Just look at it, yeah <laughs> exactly look at that way if somebody's like if you think see negative comments as somebody's talking about it like look at the likes the likes normally outweigh them like 500 to one yeah so and there's usually like, someone's mum like commenting back, being like, "The girls, the girls do this, and the girls do that." Whose mum was it? There was, there was somebody's mum, and she was literally just replying to hate comments like one after <laughs> one. And I reckon she must have been there for like two hours. I want to say it was Tomo's mum again. It was probably Tomo's mum. She's Susan's got her back, definitely. Su- 
Susan is a legend. Like yeah. I've I've she's never met her, I've player. never spoke to her, but I've seen her Twitter activated and she's a legend. She's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's her and usually Chloe's mum as well. Chloe's mum gets her involved. Um, oh, I'm not seeing Chloe's mum's on it, unfortunately. Defends all the gals, which is good. It's so it's so good. Like it's really nice. Exactly. See, teamwork. Why would you not why would you not play rugby? It's one big exactly. team. <laughs> Right, quick question I'm going to ask you, and I thought about it as we were looking there, so if anybody saw me looking down and thought I was being very rude, I wasn't. Maggie Alfonsi announced that there was she made her Lions team after the Six Nations. How good do you think having a women's Lions team would be having a tour? Yeah, I mean, that, that's that been discussed and been like, there's been like rumours flying around about mm-hmm. it. I think that would be an amazing thing. You know, mm-hmm. there's just bringing together the talent from the Nations and mm-hmm. playing alongside people that are just you know people like Emily Scarrett and people like that like getting the opportunity to actually play alongside them and train alongside them is just it would be incredible like it would and I think mm-hmm. it would be a great development thing as well for players who potentially don't play um as high a level of rugby or you know obviously the the English team have been in several like World Cup finals and stuff like they're very experienced you know playing alongside and training alongside experience like that is just it would be amazing um mm. yeah that would be that would probably have to be one of the goals as well if i was to <laughs> if i was to say um yeah i think getting selected for that would be incredible i think that'd be class i would do you know what i would do with it i would do it but i wouldn't take it overseas if that made sense i'd bring them to here yeah i think that would be because like new zealand women's rugby doesn't get quite as much publication over here as the new zealand men's stuff so it would be a good way to showcase the talent, I think, would be a good way. Yeah, it would be. It would be. And I think, obviously, with the Premiership final being streamed on TV, I mean, that, that's... Oh, how, how good was that game? Yeah, like, very much forwards-based. Um, but, yeah, impressive. <laughs> Euro yeah, 7? Impressive. What's wrong with that? Euro 7? <laughs> not, not 7. <laughs> I don't understand why I was playing 7, but here I, we are. Um, I yeah. love the thought. I love the thought of you like going to Rachel and just giving her a wee nudge, going, "Oh, I'd do this this way if I was you." You need to do that <laughs> in the next episode. As I as a seven, that. as as a seven that relinquished my jersey to you, this is how yeah. I would do it. <laughs> um, well, there was a there was a season of Six Nations where I was playing in the back row quite a lot, um, and Rachel's always like, "Yeah, that's not happening again. Like that can't happen again." <laughs> I'm like, "Don't you, worry, I don't I don't want that to happen." Were you the classic? The coach goes, "What number do you wear?" And you're like, "Question mark." Just whatever you yeah, mean. that season was mad. I think I played <laughs> 6, 7, 12, 11 and 13 that season. Love that. It was, it was mad. That sounds, so, that sounds like me on a night out saying like, oh yeah, so I stepped to this guy, I rocked that. And <laughs> <laughs> you just I, you yeah. just got to you got to live the drunk rugby tale from every like yeah. old man sports club ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was ridiculous. And there was one game I think where I played like three different positions. So yeah, that was that was a fun year. Um, but yeah, at the same time, I've said to the coaches, like, I don't, because I've played there before, mm-hmm. it, it, like, it, it kind of suits my style anyway, like, I would be fine to fill in if they needed me to, so um, I think that, that gives them a bit of confidence as well with, like, their selections, because they know that if needed, I can step in and help. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, hopefully, just to play, just want to play 13. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's where I want to be. I don't want to be in the <laughs> Scrums are fun. It's a nice little break. I was the wor- as a back row. I was the worst guy. I was the make sure make, you know. And it's like the coach is like it's an all eight effort. Yeah, you could, like, no, it's not. And, like, and you could you could see, about it at the, at the you could see every flank. I was like, nah, I'm all right. <laughs> I'm shattered. <laughs> I know you. Yeah. Like, you need to push the prop in. I'm like, nah, I don't. Yeah, I'm fine. It's like you yeah. you sit there and you go, I know you expect me to be over there in ten seconds, so I'm going to rest here. <laughs> yeah, it's quite nice as a back when there's a scrum row because you do get a wee rest. Forwards are just grunting and groaning, and then we're just having a wee, a wee bit of chill. As as I'm sure all your forwards friends will probably tell you, forwards make backs look good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the workhorses and the show ponies. Yeah. Lass, lass is there, trying to make sure her ears are not the size of her head. <laughs> yeah, with her bun like here. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, like she comes out of every scrum looking like an absolute warrior. <laughs> it's like you say, it's like <laughs> got like mascara down her face. Yeah. <laughs> like you need to get waterproof mascara. Like why have you got it all over your face? I but, I'm yeah. just like the effort that you guys like to put waterproof to put mascara on before a game. Like, <laughs> they, like do you remember like old like school like old like all day rugby and you just rock up like straight out of bed and you'd be like, nah, I'm there. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a lot more effort needed for uh, yeah. for women's rugby. 
It's because you're all it's because you're all prime time now. Now that the, the, <laughs> the no, as soon as it's a stream, you're like right. We yeah. can sort stream. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the thought of you all in the team, and it's like you know like the usual five minutes, like get your head in the game, get focused. Yeah. And you're all sat there, just going, "Are we on stream today? Yeah, we're on stream. Right, right. We'll check. <laughs> yeah. Right. Last question about that before we get on to you out and your teammates. Which is the bit everybody loves. Ooh. If you could play, if you could play any sport that isn't rugby, what sport would it be? So, I play touch as well, and I've also played a bit of lacrosse. So I think it would be one of them. That's a terrifying sport. <laughs> That's so much fun, though. But who decided we should play hockey? Put a net on the stick, and we should play it with the ball in the air. <laughs> I know it's quite savage as well, and I think because I'm so new and I'm, I've not played it a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't understand how much contact is allowed because it's mm -hmm. technically not non contact, like women's lacrosse, but mm -hmm. then you just get carried away. You've got a stick <laughs> in your hand as well, so you just get carried away. Yeah. But I really enjoyed <laughs> natural, it. Natural instinct. Natural instinct. You see somebody running towards you and just oh. stick a shoulder in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think it would be one of them. So the curling, curling wouldn't make a comeback, no? You. You, you need to mm. play a sport that hurts. <laughs> I need to play a sport that, like, curling's great, but. I'd also, I mean, I probably would play that as well, but I'd need to play a sport where I actually feel like I'm doing something because sometimes curling, <laughs> you're just standing there. <laughs> you no, know, um, you've got to, with the, not if you're the one with the brush, mate. They when look, you're sleeping, yeah. Yeah. Like, I've yeah. seen people do that and I'm convinced the ice is about to melt because they're about to push <laughs> no, through it. Upper body burn. Yeah. Nothing but forearms looking like yeah. Popeye. <laughs> oh, it's so savage. It's so savage. <laughs> Well, there we go. You've officially made it through the interview stage, the conversation. <laughs> stage. Now you just have to tell all your mates down the river. <laughs> That's all we got to do. So, right, before we get on to that, I hope you've had fun. But here we go. So we're now going to do my little section that we call teammates. Teammates with Hannah Smith. Same as before with the quick fire. First name that comes into your head, read it out. If there's somebody that I think is going to come after you, I will let you try and explain yourself. <laughs> And then you have to let me know how all the DMs go after it comes back and somebody oh. goes, I can't believe you said that for me. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's we'll start off nice and easy. Uh, to, to, to so many pages of notes. Start off nice and easy. Hardest tackler? Uh, Lana Skeldon, I think. Lana Skeldon. Yeah. Fold, folds people like cheap suits. Yeah. <laughs> she is a monster. I, I love that she slots kicks as well. I have so much. Oh. Any, any time a front row goes... I've got this. It's okay. <laughs> oh, there's a there's a YouTube video and it's like Scotland's um, mm -hmm. only kicking hooker, and it's a video of Lana slotting a kick. It's so funny. <laughs> I love it. I just have that on repeat. <laughs> it's so strong, like so good. Pin tweet. That's me. <laughs> yeah. Right. Who's got the fastest feet? Who's the best? Who's the best? Most footwork. Yeah, Chloe Rowley is outrageous. So she, yeah, yeah, probably her. I can believe that watching the final. Yeah. Unbelievable. Anybody that changes pace at full speed terrifies me. Oh, yeah. I just don't understand it. I'm like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> right. Human turnstile. Who can't tackle for love nor money? <laughs> um, That's the reaction we won. Rachel McClack. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> can't say that. <laughs> She's going to be Rachel. Um, yeah. <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Rachel. This is the best bit because, like, all these questions come through my podcast, and I'm just like, I didn't say it. Yeah, you're the innocent <laughs> but, party. Yeah. But what Rachel, what you know, do is you come on and then you just answer Hannah Smith for everything yeah, exactly. that's bad. Just get me back. <laughs> yeah, and then just answer yourself for all the good ones. <laughs> yeah. right. Who's most up for a night out? We've spoken about how good boozy buses are after a night out. Who's the most up for it? Probably Louise McMillan. She's always up for a night out. Really? She loves it. Yeah. Is she, is she a get everybody dancing, or is she like a I'm gonna chop a pint and show you all the tone that we're taking for the evening? She basically tries to get everyone else to chop pints. <laughs> <laughs> is she that's the one that's always the one that's always playing the game, like the one that's always walking around like a spare twenty p, and you know what's going at the bottom of somebody's oh, drink she'd, if they're yeah, not. She'd be doing that. I mean, to be fair, so would I. But yeah, she does that. Yeah, that's the good one. Right. So you're now on this night out. Louise McMillan's got everybody there. Who can't handle that night out? Lisa Thompson, <laughs> without a doubt. Tom, oh, she does not a drinker. <laughs> She's a drinker. She just can't. She just can't. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, who's the best player skills wise you've ever played with? Oh, 
Like, who is who's the one you see just going, you are incredible at rugby? <laughs> for me, I think I'd probably say Holly H. Sim. Really? Yeah. That girl. Uh, that, 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 that wasn't so no, surprising. But... <laughs> no, she is unreal. Like, oh. she just pulls things off, and I'm like, how have you done that? Like, like the girl is amazing at rugby. Fair play. So, following on from that, who's the most incredible athlete you've seen? Maybe not the best skills wise, but who just thinks, like, you are an athlete? Um, Deborah Fleming, she is stacked. Like she really? gets like, her body pump from like carrying her handbag. Like she's just, so just rig. Yeah, oh, just a rig. Ridiculous, ridiculous. <laughs> right, who's got the worst fashion sense? Who's turned up in the most iconic pieces of clothing? And you CB. thought that's terrible. CB. What's, what's CB's? What's CB's dress sense like? CB's quite fashionable. Like, she makes her own good stash. She makes good stash, but. It's her other selection. Like she'll turn up in like this wild, multicolored fleece, and then like Crocs, and I just what? can't take it. <laughs> Crocs. I'm a fan of Crocs. I don't own them, but I'm a fan of them. They're I making a comeback, like... and I'm just like, what is wrong with a Birkenstock? Like, why are people wearing Crocs? Get your get your Jesus sandals so far away from me. No, Birkenstocks. Are you, are you... The best thing ever. Birkenstocks. That sounds like a hate crime. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Less of a hate than bloody Crocs, honestly. Crocs are, I'll defend Crocs. CB, I'll wear Crocs. <laughs> but CB's been stick to her, but she knows stick to She, yeah, she probably has actually, to be fair. <laughs> I think everybody in Scotland's been Everybody except you. <laughs> you just need, like, team, like, when we're doing a team bonding session prior to the amateur game, just, hi, I need a table for 32 at Ting yeah, Tai I know. Maybe I should speak to Brian about that. Get that organised. <laughs> Brian, key to winning the Six Nations next year. Spike ball, tuck tuck, <laughs> rugby tennis, <And> ting <laughs> tack. <ting -tack. laughs> so home. give me a credit card, please. <laughs> I will also be there for moral support. Now, yeah. Brian, I'll, I've had the pleasure of speaking to Brian once or twice. He's lovely. Uh, yeah, he's a nice man. Brian, come on the pod. I'd like to get you on the pod. You'd be good fun. And you'd probably get invited if you had him on the pod. You'd probably get invited for a ting tie. <laughs> you should probably do that. <laughs> Well, Brian, Hannah's nice edit. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the pod. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see him answer these, actually. Right, biggest joker in the locker room. Who's the who's the who's the practical joker? Uh, probably CB again, actually. Is she is she like a is she like a genuinely funny or is she like a? I think this is hilarious, and everybody else is like CB, sit down. <laughs> She's very silly, but she also is quite a good person to take the piss out of as well and like wind her up. So like is she's she? very very bubbly and very fun, um, but yeah, you can also rinse her and she's hilarious. So yeah, probably see. That's that, that's that Canadian upbringing and passion though. Oh, like they are yeah. the most. Like she's I don't think so I've ever seen a boy. sad Canadian. Yeah. No, like she's such like if you're having a bad day, you want to you want to spend time with CB. Like she is, yeah. she she just cheers you right up. She's great. Like she's such a good egg. Exactly. Yeah, for people that are listening, if you've never seen that before, my the guy that was on the other week, Bruce. He's phenomenal, or if, I don't know if Bruce will be on this. I won't say that. I go, yeah. So people listening, if you want to hear, like, so we're talking about CV. If you want to understand what CV is like, there's a hat. There's a podcast that she was on with a good friend of mine called Bruce Aitchison. The podcast is Happiness is podcast. It's really really good. Happiness is egg shaped. CV is on that, and it almost went viral her episode because it was like so infectiously happy because she was like fresh she's off her first call and thought she's so good. Well, she was right. buzzing, like she's and she's done so well. She's worked so hard, you know. She's she's just a great, great girl, and she's so good for the culture as well. So good for the environment in Scotland, like she's just so bubbly. So yeah. I oh, know. She. I was listening to because her. Um. I listened to her podcast. Oh, not her podcast. I listened to Bruce's on a Monday morning as I'm getting ready for work. Because yeah. it's like it's it's a proper. You go from oh it's Monday to there's only 19 hours left in the day. I better do four million push ups and go change the world. So. Yeah. <laughs> Right, I'm getting distracted. Best dancer. Who's the best dancer in the team? Hmm. Um, I think probably Louise McMillan again. Well, that's that's a good combination to have. Most up for a night out and best dancer. Both got moves. She, I mean, we talk, she's probably not quite like, as good as me, but she's got moves. Okay, what's what's your go-to dance move if you're going to claim you're the best dancer? Uh, reverse park. That's my favourite. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> so and the next question is going to be. And then you're uh, across the club. 
<laughs> is, nice. it, is, it a, is it a question of how far you can go back before somebody stops getting out of your way? Or yeah, <laughs> it's quite fun. <laughs> I, I'm gonna do that because I'm I'm the worst person when I drink. I just believe that everybody's my best pal, so I'm definitely gonna do that. <laughs> right, so corresponding, you and Louise McMillan hitting the reverse park. Who's the person that's dancing? You think you need to stop dancing? Who's the worst dancer? Chloe Rowley. She's not that. You can't, you can't have the best feet and not dance. Yeah. Like, you can't. I also just think it makes her uncomfortable. So she's usually just in the corner, just recording everybody making absolute idiots of themselves because she, <laughs> she just doesn't get involved. Um, so yeah, she, I just, she just doesn't have the rhythm. <laughs> oh, I, I, I think it's Chloe just sidestep around the room. Maybe not quite as exaggerated, but just yeah. sidestep around the room and you're there. I know. It's, I'd love to see her sidestep in the middle of a nightclub. <laughs> that would be so funny. It would be so good. Right, who's got best tunes? Who's the one post game that gets the ox cord and gets the team fired up? Um, so Rona Lloyd would want me to see her, but she just puts. <laughs> I reckon on... there's just so much patriotism in that. <laughs> she, just, she just puts on Red Hot Chili Peppers, and when you've heard it once, you've heard it a thousand times. So, yeah, she's not the one I would pick. It's usually Lisa Thompson again. She's usually the one that's got her phone connected. Decent tunes. <laughs> I can imagine Tom was on decent tunes. <laughs> oh, yeah. So much respect for Tom. I'm so terrified yet. I think she's brilliant at that. <laughs> She'll hate me saying this. So, like, for people to know, I know Tom through work and I'm terrified yet. Love her at the same time. <laughs> yeah, she's a good egg as well. Exactly. And she's class at Tuk Tuk, so we're fine. <laughs> He's very good at Tuk Tuk. Yeah. Right. Who's the future coach? Who's one of the players when you see and you just go, you love your rugger? I can see you as a coach. Sarah Law. Really? She knows every single law inside out. So yeah, if you've got any questions about the rules, you ask Sarah Law. Fair. I like that. The one who knows the laws the best is called Law. I yeah, know Sarah Law. <laughs> <laughs> right. So who's hard as nails? Who's the one person that, if you were to wind somebody up on the pitch and then stand behind, who would it be? Um, Jodie Retty, I think. Really? I mean, she's a walking yellow card, but she is. She goes into a different place when she comes on the pitch. Like, she is yeah. scary. So, yeah, nothing, she would be backing me up. Nothing wrong with yellow cards. Yellow cards equal passion. <laughs> <laughs> I know Brian, like I said, when you get, like, your record number of yellow cards next year, yeah. no, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Brian. <laughs> it's passion, Brian. <laughs> yeah, she's got, Georgie's got a lot of passion. <laughs> As you should. Right, so, second last one. Who hogs the mirror post game? Um, yeah, I think that's a pretty obvious one. Um, it's got to be Emma Wassell. <laughs> oh, that's because she's not she's not got a waterproof mascara, so she's got to fix that. That's the thing. She's got to reapply her mascara. She's got to put her eyebrows back on. She's got a lot of work to do. She's yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I'd label it saying she's got a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah, after all that comes off, she needs to yeah. sort it out. Well, after <laughs> after being a war horse in the trenches. That's, well, yeah. I that's, mean, she got that's, she that's worked what, that's hard. What Hannah yeah, that's what Hannah meant. Not, not she's got a lot of work to do. <laughs> there we go. And last one, which member of the team would go to Nando's in order of playing Spice? Uh, Lisa Thompson cannot handle Spice at all. <laughs> I feel sorry for Lisa. We're just out in her here. I mean, we yeah, said she's good she at tuk tuk. on these on these things. Yeah. She would order Lisa, that late. Yeah. If it's not medium or lemon and herb, we're not interested. No, it's just well, it has. To, I get hot. Like she has to get hot at least once. I, 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 I don't get hot. I'll be honest. <laughs> well, I'll be flat out. Probably try. So, yeah, she'd get a plane. Uh, for Tom. Oh, Tom, you'll be fine. You'll be absolutely fine. But, yeah. yeah just don't just get a plane. accept yourself, like, back, back yourself. You want a plane chicken, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, just say it with pride. Like, shout it when you get to the door. <laughs> what spikes do you want? Plane. <laughs> yeah. Look them dead in the eye. Right, that was teammates. Hannah, you've survived it. I, you've not <laughs> you've not lost any friends there, I don't no. think. Tom, Tom will make it after you after the podcast. Other than that, yeah, we'll be no, great. I might have to, may have to let Tom know what I said. Yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> message you the week. Yeah, I'll message you the week before it goes out, and then you can be like, I don't know if you know about this, but if you do see it, don't click on it. <laughs> yeah, don't don't watch it. Yeah. I'll I'll sacrifice losing that one listener for that week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was awful. Just don't go on it. It's terrible. <laughs> right, we're at the final question, Hannah, and it is the question that the only one I gave you a bit of time to prepare for. So you've just had your biggest win. Scotland have just put 50 on France on debut. You've smashed everybody. The boozy bus is going out. You've got three cheesy pop songs to put on the tunes to get everybody ready. What three pop songs are you going for? So my choices chop and change quite a lot, but I think the ones that I'm obsessed with at the moment are Sailor V by Bewitch. Great song. 
Pretty so. And um, Wanna Be by the Spice Girls. That's a classic. You've got mm-hmm. to have that in there. Um, and then 99 Red Balloons is my current favourite right now. Um, <laughs> is- bit niche, but... I enjoy it. It's so. also also a banger. I like. I love the <laughs> fact that you just put one for yourself as well. You're like uh, the the two are for the rest of the team. There's last ones for me. Yeah. Is that the is that the order you'd go in as well? Is that would be the order they get played? Um, I think yeah. Actually, it probably would be yeah. Get sailors so, yeah. on first, and then want to be yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's definitely the best. Right, Hannah Smith, you have successfully managed to navigate through my car crash of a podcast that is the Overname is <laughs> podcast. So you've got Sail V, you've got Wannabe by the Spice Girls, and then you've got 99 Red Balloons. Incredible choice. That's definitely up there in the top three. <laughs> I didn't think I didn't think they'd get that far, but they are truly great songs. So yeah, you've done well. So strong. Exactly. Right, Hannah, where can they find you on social media? Um on Instagram, Big Smithy. Yeah, get Amazing. That are you on Twitter or are you just chilling? Uh, I'm not on Twitter. I don't use it. No. Um, yes. I feel like I would just like you already got Instagram and Facebook popping off. I don't mm-hmm. think you really need. I, I don't no. need a third one to keep me occupied. So <laughs> yeah, I just avoid the Twitter as far as I can. Well, either way, Big Smithy on Instagram is where you go if you want to see a lot of dogs and you get to see some good <laughs> top class rugby behind the scenes as well. So as we go, right, that's the end of the podcast. Hannah, thank you so much for coming on. It's actually been really, really enjoyable. I've learned, loved hearing about behind the scenes at Scotland, behind the scenes at the GB camp. Loving how a vet tells me how she manages to find the time and makes me feel really unproductive in my day. <laughs> right, guys, thank you all for listening. I want you to go down, like the podcast, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your mate, tell your mum, tell your dad, tell your dog. Uh, if you're going to be giving me some constru- constructive criticism, I love it. For example, getting the word constructive out is a good start. If you're going to be mean on Twitter or Instagram, at least make it funny and then I'll retweet and get some likes that way. So thank you very much for listening. Stay safe and we'll see you all again soon. Bye. Hannah, say cheerio. Thank you. See you later. Cheerio.